Right guys and girls, Mark Crosswood here. Today we're going to be talking about lag. Hopefully you found this video because you're searching about how to get more lag, hit the ball further, those kind of ideas. I'm going to use my hack motion sensor. This is going to give us some wrist angle data to allow us to see exactly what lag is doing or not in the golf swing. And maybe why the term lag is more of a search term that golf pros will use to try and find you to give you the information that you want but maybe the information you want is actually not what you want. And it's one of golf coaching's biggest trip ups that we're still getting wrong and it amazes me that we're still getting wrong. Let's show you what I mean. So let's kick this off with what lag is. What people understand lag to be is often known as this kind of two dimensional look on the camera between the lead arm and the club. So how much angle you put into your swing. So the more angle you leave it on the way down, the more lag, the more chance you've got of picking up speed if you can get that angle out is the idea. Where the opposite to that would be chucking the club away, trying to get the club or the club flipping forward at the bottom. It's going to be weaker, it's going to be slower, it's going to create shorter shots. They're the ideas of lag. So we're talking about ulna and radial deviation. So the wrist hinging up and then the wrist hinging down and then what that might do in turn to the head in relationship to speed. So this being weaker in people's minds, this being load stronger if you can hold on to it and then get it out down by the ball. Maybe in those comments down below, does, is that what lag means to you? It's certainly what it's translated as in on the telly and uh, in videos and, and, and there's still people maybe pushing this idea of, of lag and holding on to angles. Let me know if that's what it means to you. And the reason I'm making this video is I do some coaching videos where people who are slicing the ball off to the right, struggling to control face the path. I talk about trying to get rid of this angle on the way down, chucking it away and trying to feel like the club's almost overtaking at the bottom. And you still get a decent portion of comments of people saying, that's ridiculous. You're going to like flip it forward, lose power. You need to be getting some lag. Why would you take all that lag away? So we're trying to address those kind of ideas that I'm, to be fair with you, shocked that are still going around. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit a series of shots where I try and hit target with my normal default swing, trying to give it a smash. And what we're going to do is we're going to capture these shots on hack motion as well. So it'll measure what my wrists are doing. We'll relate that to the speeds and show you exactly what happens when I hit my normal ones. And then I'll compare some where I hit some with lots of lag and then I'll hit some where I take all the angle out. And let's just see what happens. There is a distinct pattern that happens. So my normal swing here, I'm not thinking of particularly adding any angle in at all. I'm just letting it go. I'm using my default settings, if you like. I am concentrating some other ideas of delivery, but not through how much ulna or radial deviation I have in, lag, hinge up or down. So we've got some wrist angles coming in now from hack motion. We're now going to switch the swing around. Now I'm going to hit a series of shots where I try and on the downswing add angle in, really try and hold on to angle as long as possible and then let it go. I'm going to see what happens to the speed, direction, the shots, those kind of ideas. So feelings I have as soon as I try and add angle on the way down. The idea of controlling the club face becomes, in my mind, considerably harder. Possibly feel like I could go a little faster, but then again, I don't think I could because I'm really having to work to line things up to get any kind of shot, which you can see there's a pattern forming already with these. Data's coming in on the lag swing where I'm trying to hold on to angle. We're now going to try and do somewhere I just chuck it all away, which is a common teaching technique that I use. So we're now going to try and take the angle out as early as possible, chuck the driver head away as I start down. Don't try to hold on to any kind of lag, certainly not increase it, the opposite. Feels very wooden, feels stiff, very different shots. 
This is a technique I use with students and it has massive benefits. And when I see people getting really confused with these ideas, it does upset me because it can help so many of you play better golf, which we'll show you in a second. Maybe some of you are already seeing the patterns of the shots already. Because they are very, very different. So as I just collect a bit more data hitting each shot, what I'll do is let's look at the hack motion data to show you how I am changing my wrist angles. So first swing here, this is my first swing, and a point of reference we're going to use is when lead arm is parallel to the ground on the downswing. So as soon as I start coming down, my lead arm is parallel to the ground. How much angle have I got? What angles are in my wrist with the free shot? So this is my shot, my standard. When my lead arm is parallel to the ground, my wrist is actually an ulna. So I'm the opposite to lag. I am actually angling my wrist slightly down to the ground at this point, as you can see. And just as a second point, we'll come back to this. My wrist is in one degree of flexion, which is basically meaning my lead wrist is pretty flat with my lead arm. So I'm not extending it and I'm not particularly bowing it, even though it says it's one degree that way. It's a tiny measurement. It's pretty flat. So again, lead arm coming down. I'm in ulna, so I'm already taking wrist out. That's from here to here. Wrist angle was all gone. Any angle I've put in is gone out, and my lead wrist is pretty flat with my lead arm. If we look at swing two, this is the one now where I'm really trying to lag it. So if we bring it on the downswing to a similar position, so lead arm now parallel to the ground, you can see I am now plus 15 degrees. So I have held onto that angle more. I'm plus, I'm radial, I'm hinging up, I'm lagging that club back more. And then just as a side note, and we'll get onto what this means for you as golfers, look at the extension and flexion. I am now 33 degrees cupped. So that's quite a big deviation from zero in those two swings. So not only is the ulna and radial lag or chuck away very different, the flexion extension is very, very different as well. What that means we'll come to. I know this feels quite data intensive. We'll get on the mat in a second and really make you see what this means in as clear and kind of basic terms as possible. Now this is the last swing where I tried to chuck everything away, really get rid of angles again, lead arm parallel to the ground, which is, if I can just stop it there. We are now 14 degrees ulna. So this is basically showing you that I'm doing the things that I'm saying. I'm now hinging that wrist down to the ground for 14 degrees. And then I am in extension by eight degrees. So a little bit of extension around seven degrees difference from my standard shot, which actually isn't that much. Seven degrees, like we're talking, you wouldn't see that on a camera. So let's show you what that did to the data and how it changed the shot shape, the speeds, those kind of ideas. And then we'll talk about what you should be thinking, how you can relate these ideas to your action. So here are the three shots. We've got the yellow is my standard, the red is the lag, trying to add more angle, and then the blue, light blue here is the flip, me taking angle out. The biggest noticeable difference, obviously my one is the most trained, so it's hopefully hitting target, which it is. The lag is more of a shaping off to the right shot. You can see the curvature on it and it's missing right and it's the shortest. And the flip where I'm taking angles away, you can see it's the second longest or second shortest, and it's more left. So trying to hold onto angle created more of a cut push to the right, trying to take angle out, made it actually pull a bit to the left and draw to the left. And in between that, I found my kind of sweet spot of hitting next to no lag as lead arm parallel down to the ground. I was actually slightly in ulna, so taking angles away. And that's where I found my longest and I found my straightest. Now, just a little side note as we go on, everyone's matchups will be slightly different. No one, your, your wrist angles won't all be the same. This is more of a general idea of trying to hold on to loads of angle to taking it out, because if you start in different grip positions, those angles will severely change. But if you've got any kind of neutrality in your setup, so I'm a very neutral, I'm slightly weak to neutral hold and setup, and then paths and actions, allows me to have these more neutral patterns, if you like. So in my standard shots, averaging 2.8 with the driver, because I caught them a little bit out the bottom. Uh, the lag, it went up to 3.5, so quite a noticeable difference. And then the flip swing was the lowest spinning one out of all the three shots. Now, ball speeds, 160 with my standard driver, 152 with trying to create loads of lag and more speed, 154 with the flip. Now, in the comments down below, does that surprise you? So the one where I'm taking the angle all the way is going further than the one where I'm doing the so-called hold on to angle, what tour players do hit it loads further. It's absolutely the wrong way around for what lots of people think lag 
does. And then resulting distance, average in carrying 270, 242 the shortest with the lag, and then 249 with the flip. So the flip isn't as good as my standard carry. Uh, I wasn't able to swing it as fast. So you could argue a certain amount of lag. So having considerably less angle here, possibly made me a little bit shorter. You could argue as well that maybe with both of those, the lag and this one, they're not as practiced as the other one, which is why we see a drop. The, I would say the lag and the flip though are equally as unpracticed as each other. And instantly I know which one I would be using out of those two. I would want the extra carry, I would want the lower spin, and I definitely would want the bigger ball speed. Let's look what happened to club data. So my head speed was averaging 111 with my driver, 107 to 107 with the lag and the flip. So the flip and the lag, we saw no difference in head speed. They were, the, the head speeds were exactly the same. We saw big differences in angle of attack, hitting down, hitting up, and then we saw big differences in club path, meaning you could get these two very, very similar, but you would have to deal with this, the angle of attack being so far down, which would be a bit of a problem because that's why this has been uh, so hard to control. Lower strikes, hitting down with loft, it's just gonna spin. And then let's not forget this. This is the key for most people watching. Short right, bit longer left. Look at the contrast between these two. So what does this actually mean for you as a golfer? Well, what I see from golfers, and it upsets me that we still, again, have to have this conversation because it hurts so many golfers, is for me to hold on to more angle, to me to increase this fictional idea of two-dimensional lag, which is actually built around the fact that if you actually change this angle, because it's on a incline, it looks more than it does if you stand it up, which is where people get lost to thinking that someone like Garcia has considerably more lag. He doesn't have more lag. He's just got it here. The angle's the same. It's just really flat down behind him, which is why it looks like it increases from it being maybe a lot more here where I stood it up in front of you. To increase that angle on the way down, what I actually have to do, and you can do this at home, is I need to extend this wrist a lot more. Because if, if you're just at home watching this video, in bed or wherever you're watching this video, I want you just to put your lead arm out in front of you, so for me, my left. And I want you to see how much range of movement have you actually got in this wrist from a neutral position where it's pretty level with your uh, lead arm, how much range of movement have you got hinging it up without adding extension where it will hinge up loads more? So if you keep it all flat, so keep it all in line, how much you've got of hinging it up? This radial that we were seeing on the graph, it's tiny. Our wrists just don't move that far. Now hinging it down is a little bit more. I feel like I can hinge it down a little bit more, which is what we're doing on the way down, getting those angles out. Now, if I extend this wrist, if you now do this, just extend the wrist so you've got a cup here, what will happen is the two bones in here will almost flip over and you're now actually rotating your lead arm to get this angle to extend. So what we see with people who want to hold on to more angle, I can only hinge my wrist, say, this far, but if I now extend my wrist, look where it's going now. Look, it's going up by my right shoulder. Put that in a downswing. Oy, this is what we see all the telly people lagging it. Whoa, I want it at miles, I want to get more lag. No, what you're doing is you're, if you're doing that, as you saw me do the same, if I extend that wrist to get that angle, the club face control is massively compromised. And think about the shots. When I hit the extra lag, and I was, I was adding more angle in, but I was doing it by adding lots of extension in as well. Now what happens is I actually don't go any faster but I struggle not to hit that shot. I struggle not to hit a big, massive pull or push cut. Now think about the amount of golfers who watch these videos, who are searching for more power, getting done by the algorithm and pros just giving you what you want. You know, you want to know how to lag it more. Well, here's a video on how to lag it more. The fact that it hurts you, think about it. How many of you watching struggle with cuts off to the right, uncontrollable off to the right shots with your driver? I can see how many of you are searching for how to stop slicing videos. There's data on that. Loads of you, millions of you, yet, this video is probably one of the most comprehensive how to stop slicing videos there is out there. But people are out there trying to find more lag and being delivered ideas and more lag where actually for most golfers out there and the same pattern applied to me, I'm gonna aim this one a little bit up the right. Now, obviously I could aim that one up the left, but I would have to aim it a long way up the left. I'm gonna take angle out on the way down. 
Look at the shape of that shot. Look how functional that shot is. They're within one mile an hour clubhead speed of each other. And look how much further the second one has gone. It's just such a more functional drive. Now, if you think about it, if people are slicing, the amount of videos I've done and talk about extending wrist, controlling face, this is why you see people stand the club up. This is why you see people try to get the club path moving way out to him because they know the face is gonna be pointing over there to try and carve the ball back to the target. When you get golfers trying to actually take the ideas of lag that they've got wrong out of their swing, chuck it away, we start actually seeing these kind of shots. Now, just remember as well from my numbers on hack motion, the swing I'm doing there is extreme. It's a lot of numbers out. I am really pushing that to try and ex like kind of exaggerate a point both sides for the video. See, if you're someone who takes angles out too much, this won't apply for you. You know, this, this isn't really, well, actually that's wrong. If you're someone who takes angles out too much and you see it on, a vid on video and you think, right, I'm gonna search how to get more lag, this video is very much for you because what you're gonna find is lag the ideas of the angles you set the wrists on the way down is actually built about matchups. It's built around what matchups you are making or bringing to your swing. Let me just give you an idea on that to close these ideas off. So think about the golfer that we see, they send me videos and they're flipping it forward at the way down. They say, oh, I'm flipping it forward at the way down. I can't hit my driver. I need to think I need to try and get more handle lean as I hit the ball, say if it's an iron or even in their driver, feel like I get my handle up to the ball more. Where your handle relates to the head is all to do with the matchups and the functionality that you have in your action often built around these wrist angles and ideas of extension and flexion, so cupping and flattening lead wrist, how much angle you're putting in, which then relates very closely to that extension as we saw in mine. If I make an action here where I point the face off to the right, so you can see in my face is severely pointing high to the right. So let's think about that. I'm pointing the face this way. If I wanna hit a ball not high to the right, I can either fix that in a swing, so put rotations in, but you're obviously not doing that because if you were putting rotations in, you would still have this, you wouldn't have the handle back. You wouldn't have this, what people call flippy impact. I can do it in another way. Look, if I turn the face this way, what I can do is if I could pull the handle back, so you can see the handle back here, see the handle back here, that face is now, it's got more loft on it, but it's pointing much straighter or even left, which is where I need it to point to curve it back to target. The reason you're seeing impacts that are flipping forwards, which often then lead to people thinking, oh, I need to get more lag and I don't get enough handling, those kind of ideas. It's there to make you functional. It's a matchup pattern. So again, those people would be better off trying to take that angle out on the way down because taking that angle out on the way down often leads to flattening lead wrist. Flattening lead wrist leads to controlling the face a little bit better. If the face is controlled that a little bit better, then you will want things to line up. They naturally tend to start lining up at the way down. What happens for me if I point this face off to the right, hopefully you can see that pointing off to the right there. For me to hit this straight, I'll do it really slow so we can pick it up on the camera. Look, I'll just chip it. I need to hit it there. I need to be hitting it that way, look, flipping it forwards to try and get a straightish shot. I need to use my wrist angles, my flip, to compensate for this. And what determines where this is, as we've just shown on Hack Motion, this influences your ability to do this, your ability to extend wrist or flatten lead wrist, which is related to how much of this you're trying to put in, controls that. Which then controls how you move everything else. This is the beauty of measuring and the beauty of where golf tuition is trying to go in the better circles. Unfortunately, with the way the world works at the moment, with online content where everyone's trying to get your views, the easiest way to get your views is to deliver you the information you want, regardless if that information is gonna help you or not. And that's the hole we're finding ourselves circling around in at the moment. And hopefully this video gives you some ideas of how important it is to understand terms like lag, what they can do for directional shots, and how possibly it is still one of the worst terms used in golf. Anyone out there trying to create more lag in their golf swing, unless they're struggling with like low duck hooks and they actually need to create some different angles to get that more functional, 
and I know that's not many people watching this video, the majority of people are actually going the wrong way round about it. Let's calm down these angles on the way down. Next time you're at the range, try a few, do your standard shot, do a couple where you chuck the angle away and try and hit some, and then do some where you really hold on to the angle. And maybe let me know in the comments down below which one works for you best. For me, I've done this with Bryson DeChambeau numbers on, hack motion as well. What you'll find with most world-class players when their lead arm gets parallel to the ground, there's next to no angle left in here. So in their wrist, they are tending to, and lots of them even go into ulna. Not many of them are in massive degrees of radial. And remember, if you've done that test, you can't actually put loads of degrees of radial in. Like, if I keep that lead wrist relatively flat, we're kind of this angle here, look. The people you see doing this, what they're doing is the difference between this and this. I've not actually changed this angle, all I've done is flattened it off and put it behind me a little bit more. It's a two-dimensional two two 2D camera trick that unfortunately commentators, people looking at their own swings, golf pros making YouTube videos trying to get your views, are still making. Let me know if this makes sense in the comments down below. If it doesn't, I'll try a different way, another way of explaining it. Let me know if any of that makes sense. I know it's quite complicated. That one's got quite a lot of data in it and what have you, and I'm sure many of you have switched off and thought, oh, it's just too complicated for me. But if you can just watch it a few times, get your head around some of the points, it can transform the way you play golf and hit shots. And actually, for lots of golfers, by taking angle out, they hit it further because their launch conditions are loads better and they're actually dealing in one or two mile an hour club head speed, which is like two to six yards, where launch conditions being improved can be like six to 12 to 15 to 20 yards. Much bigger gains. Let me know if this makes sense. Thanks for watching. As always, if you like the videos, make sure you subscribe down there. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this slightly more techy video. Um, I try to keep that simple as I could, but sometimes golf shouldn't be simple because it's a little bit more complex.